Welcome to Pocket Grass. I'm Marianne Mormon. I'll be your host for a while. You can call me Aunt Mama. A lot of people do. You know, Wintergrass Music Festival can't come together this year because of COVID. And so they had an idea about how to keep us connected and how to keep the artists playing music. A pocket is something you can slip a recipe in. Maybe it's the same size you could you could put a map in or your cell phone. Well, pocket grass is a little bit like that too. We're slipping an entire music festival into a little pocket for a little fun. This is how it works. Pocket grass themes are around food. And the way we know what food is we're asking you to send in your recipe. Go through your family recipes or something you found online. Send us one of your favorites and we'll go through them and that's how we'll pick out the recipe for the next episode. Now you're gonna enjoy this. We're gonna have music. You'll see some of the archives that came from Wintergrass. You're gonna hear a story. Cutting Harlan will be along and some fine worldwide musicians, international musicians, and homegrown musicians too. They're all great. Got your food ready? Got the best seat in the house? Got your volume up? All right. I want to welcome you to Pocket Grass episode Fish. Enjoy. Hey, this is Eli West. Uh, here's a song I wrote about a brick in the road, and it's called A Brick in the Road. Here's a brick in the road It's got something to do With the way that I choose to get over you Don't ask me how How I'm doing of late Here's a brick in the road That can love and can hate Here's a brick in the road It's got something to do With the way that I choose To get over you If I wanted a house I'd fill a big fur Mill the memories I made For the next ones to learn Here's a brick in the road It's got something to do With the way that I choose To get over you Since the day we saw blue Here's a brick in the road You think I made it for you Here's a brick in the road It's got something to do With the way that I choose to get over you
Hey everybody, we are Runaway Train. Uh, we've been a band for about 20 years. Uh, the original member down there on guitar is Greg Linder. Playing mandolin for you today is John White. And banjo is Clayton Hess. And I'm Kent Powell. And uh, we're here to play some songs for you. I, I know you're out there feeling kind of depressed and whatever, but remember that depression is just anger without enthusiasm. One, two, three. <laughs> you'll enjoy what you're about to see. It means a whole lot to me because, you know, I'm from southwestern Virginia, and I spent a lot of time getting out of there as fast as possible, only to find out how connected I am to, well, to Appalachia, to the roots of music. And what you're going to hear is Jeanette Carter. Jeanette Carter carries the history of the music that we love. She was there, Carter Family Fold, she was cooking food and bringing music to people for years and years. So you'll enjoy hearing this interview that was done with Jeanette, and pretty soon you might even see Brother Joe coming up with one of his swinette stories. So enjoy the past of our music and the present. <laughs> The 
truck first festival I had. I didn't, well, I didn't have nothing but the store, you know, out there. I didn't have no big building. And they had, uh, uh, I had seen a big flatbed army truck over there in Kingsport somewhere where they was a, having a political speech or using that for something. And I asked that man, I, I said, I, I want, uh, I'd like to have that truck or borrow it or lease it. And he said, well, what do you want with it? And I tried to tell him what I wanted. I wanted to have a festival. And I said, I need a stage. And uh, he says, well, I'll talk to ever who was over him. He said, I don't think he'll let you have it. I said, well, I'll pay something. But he talked to him, ever who this man was. I cannot tell you his name. I don't believe he ever told me his name. He said, uh, he said that he's going to let you, any woman that would try to do something like that, says, that I'm going to bring that truck over. So they brought it. Here they come two or three days ahead of time with a whole crew of men, and they set it up. And I didn't have no stage or nothing for cloggers. I wanted some uh, dance group, group. So we got some sawed down some trees in the mountain, some pines for to lay some plywood on. I fixed them and had that done. And it went across. I mean, the first festival, I I went in. I didn't have, have enough to pay them all exactly. Well, I mean, I went in the hole of, I think, about $300. I had to take care of it myself. But it... I had Mommy and Maybell, and then I had them the second year because uh, they were still living. The first festival was A.P. Carter Memorial, and the uh, second and the third was, I uh, said, the Carter family, A.P. Sir and Maybell. So, because after they was gone, why I just put it all in the Carter family. So they got to come to two of them, Mommy and Maybell. And it's been a long road. It's been a long road. I'll soon be 80 years old. And uh, I practically dedicated my life to music. Our next artist is Benjamin Hunter. Ben is a musician in his soul. He plays blues. He plays jazz. He's got old-timey folk music just coming out of his fingertips. He is a teacher. He's an artist. And it all comes together like sunshine trickling through the cedars in his northwest home. He's old growth. He's new growth. He's the history of music. And he's the future of music. Please welcome to Pocket Grass... Ben Hunter. Just like an oyster takes a toxin, turn a parasite to pearl. And he said, This life is still worth living, 
Even with struggle and with pain I won't fall victim to the stigma No matter what the billboards say It's in the margins In the spaces in between In the stitches and the seam Marks the threshold's reverie It's in the margins in the clashes of the culture Where a vinegar meets sulfur And a new life breathes again He was finishing his last year at college It was the hardest he's ever known He forgotten who he was And had to find another role so he set off to Alaska, escaped the life that he was living, working 18 hour shifts and had a dome for his misgiving. And after hard days working, they'd head to the Red Dog Inn, whiskey smokes and dancing as the band was digging in. And there were people from all over Many escaping just like him Trying to find that consolation From being where you haven't been It's in the margin In the spaces in between In the stitches on the seam That marks the threshold's reverie it's in the margin with the clashes of the culture Where vinegar meets sulfur And a new life starts to breathe Well, when I was a young boy, my mama sent me on a knee. She said, honey, don't stay idle, don't succumb to apathy. She said, go and see the wild world and all it has to share. Put yourself in unknown waters on the road anywhere. There are times when you'll feel stuck And it'll make you want to scream When you stick inside your comforts It ain't always as it seems Just like the salmon in the rivers They can't be afraid to roam Gotta navigate the waters To find their way back home It's in the morning in the spaces in between In the stitches of the seam That mark the threshold's reverie It's in the margin In the clashes of the culture Where vinegar meets sulfur And a new life breathes again spaces in between in the stitches of the scene the mark the thresholds reverie it's in the margin in the clashes of the culture where vinegar meets sulfur and a new life breathes again
Well, isn't this a fine kettle of fish? I invite Harlan over for fish ball soup. Warm up the innards. And that scrawny neck banjo is late again. The soup's going to be stone cold by the time that banjo gets here. I may just put Harlan in the soup. Holy mackerel, there's cutting Harlan. All right, the jig's up, Harlan. Why are you late this time? You went fishing. Where'd you go? Alaska? You did? You went to Alaska for salmon? The salmon are nap under the sea this time of year. It's too cold. You shouldn't have been late for the fish balls. We're the shortest flight to the 49th state. You got caught in the dark. Of course, it's dark in Alaska in the winter. And you might have caught the wrong plane. Harlan went to Ireland to catch salmon and learn some new reels, but you're late for the fish ball. You brought me a present. That cousin gets so confused, but you brought me a fish bowl. Har Harlan, I said we're having fish balls, not fish bowls. What do you mean I say bowl like ball? Ball, ball, bowl, ball. And besides that, how did you get a fish on a plane? Didn't they smell you? You know what Ben Franklin said about fish? They're just like guests. They all smell after three days. Great of the red, white, and blue. Ben Franklin would like that. And you know what else Ben Franklin did? Not only did he invent electricity, did you know Ben Franklin was the first person who brought tofu to America? Yeah, I didn't either, but I've been reading all these vegetarian kinds of recipes. Harlan, get your banjo picking fingers off the fish balls. You got work to do. What are you going to play for the next episode? Jambalaya. Tonight I'm gonna see my Mary be Good guitar mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and be gay. Oh. You know, Harlan, jambalaya is a good idea, but it's really hard to get crayfish in the wintertime. But we still have all those vegetables. Winter vegetables? Harlan, that's a great idea. Let's make vegetables. The theme for the next episode. You can even go vegan if you like. You probably got some vegetable recipes. It'll be the meatless episode. Harlan, I will tell you a story in just a minute. But right now, everybody get ready. And Harlan and I are going to join you. We may tap a little bit, we may hum, and you may strum as the fine lads from Ireland. They lit up the Wintergrass stage in 2020. Well, they're right here to warm your heart. Welcome to Pocket Grass, We Banjo 3. Good morning, this is Enda from We Banjo 3. Uh, it's just after dawn here in Galway City in Ireland. I'm out with my dog. And behind me is the world famous Galway Bay. And in the background, you can see World Heritage Site of the Burren. And uh, on the theme of salmon, every year, tens of thousands of salmon, wild Atlantic salmon, run into Galway Bay here. They come from Greenland and they travel up the Carob River into Loch Carob, and from there they travel up the rivers to spawn. And uh, every year when I'm not on tour, I'm out with my fly rod trying to catch a few. I've been very successful in the last few years. And uh, anyway, that's it. Hello from Galway Bay in Galway, obviously. And uh, here's a, a song and a few tunes from We Banjo 3. We hope to see you all again very, very soon. Stay well, stay safe.
Thank you very much. We're so delighted to be here at Pocket Grass and I uh, hope that all of you at home are doing well, keeping safe and uh, yeah, thanks for having us. We are delighted to be here. Uh, we're going to do an Irish song next. This is called Who Are You? And uh, here we go. One, two, three, four. Who are you, pretty fair maid? Who are you, me honey? Who are you, pretty fair maid? Who are you, me honey? She answered me modestly, I am me mammy's darling with me too. I am father, little da, diary father, little dairy, oh. oh. Will you come to me mammy's house when the moon is shining clearly? Oh, will you come to me mammy's house when the moon is shining clearly? I'll open the door and I'll let you in and devil the one that he was with me too. I am father, little da, diary father, little dairy, oh. Oh, she took me horse by the bridle in the bed and she led it to the stable. She took me horse by the bridle in the bed and she led it to the stable. There's plenty of oats for a soldier's horse, let him eat them if he's able. With me to Rahab, by the little dog, diary by the little dairy, oh. She led me to the table She took me by the lily white hand She led me to the table There's plenty of wine for a soldier boy She drink it if you're able With me to right yeah, Father did the die Diary father did the dairy Oh Then I got up and put on me clothes. I said, Lassie, I must leave you with me to Ray Father Diddle Da, Diary Father Diddle Dairy And when will you return again? And when will we get married? When will you return again? And when will we get married? When broken shells make Christmas bells, and then we might be married with me to Ray Father Diddle Da, Diary Father Diddle Dairy Oh!
I'm going to tell you about the battle for Beauregard. Now, people follow different things. Some people follow a dream. Other people, they, they follow money. Uncle Dover followed fish. He's a great fisherman. He could, he could find more fish than a frog. He could cast a line, oh, just beyond where the crow flies, and it would land right on the kiss of the river, and that lure would drop down just as if just as if there was a trout down there waiting for him, or black bass or crappie, all those things that swim down in the southwestern Virginia waters. But he didn't do much of anything else. He didn't seem to have a lot of ambition. He uh took a bunch of boards and made a bait shop kind of down on Smith River, one of those old rickety piers down there, and, and he sold some, some shad row, he sold some herring, and he would uh, take people out and find fish every now and then, but mostly all he wanted to do was fish. Well, he could catch any fish but one, and that was Beauregard. Now, Beauregard is a catfish, and you got to realize catfish are uglier than sin and older than the dinosaurs. Yeah. And my mother didn't like them. Mm -mm. She didn't like catfish, and she didn't like the way those people, those people, that, that's what she called folks from Appalachia, those people. She didn't like the way those people caught catfish by noodling. Noodling's a way to, to catch a catfish. Well, Uncle Dover always had his eye on Beauregard, and every year there was a contest, catfish whoever caught the biggest catfish. It was time. Spring was coming along. That's when catfish come up from the deep water and go into the shallow, froggy bottoms. That's where they like to live, and, and that's where they spawn. Well, one spring day, Uncle Dover comes over, and he's got some of his very famous fish head chowder. Mama wonders what he's doing. My brother Shaq doesn't. My brother Shaq's so happy to see Dover. Dover's teaching Shaq how to, how to cast and, and how to tie a fly. And Shaq really is into it, and he really likes it. So Shaq was hoping Dover was going to take him fishing. Mama was wondering what was going on. And, and Dover sort of stands by the door and says, Well, I'd like it if Shaq could come with me to the lake this weekend. It's the catfish contest weekend. My mama looked at Dover and said, I do not want my firstborn son using his hand for bait. And Shaq was, was cooking up the chowder, and he said, N Now, Mama, you know that the, uh, the ancients, they all caught fish with their hands, too. Mama looked at him and said, Yes, that's why so many ancients died handless. Well, when Dover told her that there was money involved, there was $100 for this contest and whoever got the biggest fish and nobody had ever caught Beauregard and every year they tried and every year Beauregard got bigger and bigger and, oh, this fish was probably 200 years old and 300 pounds by the time they got through with it. Shaq was looking, big blue eyes, hoping he was going to get to go and, and Mama's turquoise eyes were sort of narrowing down, looking skeptical at Shaq really wanted that money, and Mama knew it, so she said, Herman Shackford Mormon Jr., don't you dare get in that water. Shaq said he wouldn't, and Dover would just have him drive the boat. So Saturday came, and they go on out to Smith River, and they, they pass all the, the lake houses where the people from, you know, Washington, D.C., New Jersey, they were all building these big places, moving into rural Appalachia, and they go out, and they turned down a kind of a lagoon, a swampy, mossy place. And Dover tells Shaq, take the, take the engine up. Go on over. Mm-hmm. Shaq gets an oar, puts it down, and he holds on with a, a branch that's by the side. Dover gets on his big, high-chested gators, gets into the water, starts looking. Now, everybody said Dover could find anything, hadn't found Beauregard, but he could... He could read the water. He could tell the still water, tell where it was rippling, tell the color, drop a little heron and find out what was going on down there. So Dover goes on out. Shaq's watching him. Dover's feeling around the stumps, looking for that mud where the, where the catfish go. 
And all of a sudden, he turns around. He says, Shaq, I think I found him. I think I found him. I'm going down. This is a part about noodling that my mother does not like. When, when adult people turn themselves upside down, go down in the water, put their hand in a fish's mouth, lock it around the gills, and they are the hook. And that's what Dover was trying to do. So he goes down, nothing's happening. Shot can't see anything. Dover comes back up and says, that catfish is there. I can feel his, his flat head. I can see his whiskers. They're as big as barbells, but he's asleep. Throw me a branch. So Shaq does. He takes a branch from the side of the bank and tosses it over. Dover goes down. All of a sudden, they're swirling and moving, and, and Dover comes back up and says, Come on over here. This fish is huge. I'm going to need you to help me get the fish into the boat. Chuck goes on over, gets closer, oars it on over. He's holding steady. He's got his hand out, waiting to get this fish. All of a sudden, Dover comes up. Beauregard's on his hand. He's holding it. And Dover's trying to get to the boat, bring him over. And he tilts the boat just enough for Brother Shaq to go in the water. Now, that's okay, because Brother Shaq's a good swimmer. But all of a sudden, Shaq's got the body of Beauregard, and Dover's hands in there and going around in circles and around and around and around, and suddenly they get him. They And Shaq looks up, and that boat's starting to slip away. He's looking at, at that fish, and he's thinking about his mother's wrath, and he goes and he gets the boat. He brings it over closer, and we still got Dover with that hand, and that hand, Shaq gets the body, they pull it up into the boat. Well, the next thing that happens is they got to get the hand out of Beauregard's mouth. They inch it out, they inch it out. All of a sudden, Shaq's got the mouth open. Dover's just about to get his hand out. And, and that fish wakes up, opens one eye, and chomps down his last meal. And there went Dover's finger. Dover didn't care. Dover takes that fish, has it stuffed, has it mounted, and a really kind of interesting thing happened. Those people in the lake houses, they started paying Dover more and more to take him on tours, show him where the catfish were, teach him how to catch a spotted bass, teach him how to, how to make a fly just so that a crappie would get it. And he started making money. He replaced that boat. He got a better boat. He replaced the second boat, got a third boat, and all of a sudden he is hiring people to go on guided tours. And Dover, who followed his dream, made a success out of that fish, named his bait shop Beauregard's Bait Shop and Guided Tours. And it's still there today. First time I've ever played this number right here. We do it in that's called Salt Creek.
So here's a Carter family song. It's called You've Been a Friend to Me. And uh, I'm going to send this out to all you folks that are still confined at home, pretty much, and uh, dealing with the pandemic that's been going on. And I send this out to everybody with uh, fond wishes for speedy recovery and uh, getting back to normal eventually. You've been a friend to me. troubled stream of time since first I saw your smiling face and youth was in its prime oh I'll never forget you wherever I roam wherever you may be if edition of Pocket Grass. We certainly do thank the artists. Wasn't it nice to see Tony Rice? Yeah, we love the archives. You know, Pocket Grass is here because of Wintergrass, and we can't all be at Wintergrass this year because of COVID. But this is how young nine-year-old Silas said he's going to celebrate the weekend of February 25th. That'd be the Wintergrass weekend. Silas is going to go to the website, and binge watch each of the Pocket Grass episodes. We hope you'll have a fun time and do that too. And we'll be thinking about you. Thanks for coming along with us. Thanks for being part of the Wintergrass family and thanks for enjoying Pocket Grass. Come back the second Thursday next month and we'll bring you the meatless episode. In the meantime, take care. Keep that pocket close to your heart and we'll stay with you on pocket grass. There's an old boy asked me once, said, what's the hardest instrument you ever learned to play? And I said, well, a fiddle is, is an awful tough instrument. It takes better coordination on a fiddle than most any other instrument. And uh, I said, uh, it's, it's between a fiddle and a swinette. He said, what's that? A swinette. 
and I just pulled his leg, you know. I said, oh, it's a wind instrument. I said, you can uh, you take a little rubber band about that long and stretch it and put it around the pig's rear end, stick him up under your arm and squeeze down on him until you get the pitch note you want and then quit squeezing. And that old boy I was telling that to, he, he went shaking his head. He said, you seen me coming, didn't you? <laughs> yeah, that's why I need it. Won't you come back for I still love you, my old pal of yesterday. And the whipper will calls from the wildwood. Now, you know, when I went to school north, I got into this. I got into Yale. And you know what they told me at Yale? They told me that if I didn't get rid of this accent, I was never going to mount to anything in this world. So what's happened? Well, the accent never went away because as soon as they told me I had to get rid of it, I was sure I was going to keep it. So I learned how to say Swinette only to spend the rest of my life saying Swinette. Thank you, Wintergrass. To yesterday and picture two hearts that were light and Come back for I still love you, my old 